Hey guys, let's talk about books, shall we? I have gotten a few requests over the past months, um, the year that I've lived here, to do a tour of my bookshelf and kind of show you what books I have and what I thought of them and my favorites and my disappointments. I'm going to start up here with my fiction and then slowly move down to my non-fiction and my study books. It starts with the complete works of William Shakespeare. I like some of his work, I don't like all of his work, but hey, I still have it. Then next I have The Eldritch Tales by H.P. Lovecraft. Um, you know, the Cthulhu stories. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland and uh, Through the Looking Glass. And I have a version of Robin Hood. Obviously the Song of Ice and Fire books, uh, aka Game of Thrones books, which are seriously one of the best books I have read in my life. If you love the television series, definitely, definitely recommend you to read the books as well, because they are just incredibly well written, and it just goes so much more into depth and details than the television series, that it's definitely worth reading if you've already seen the show, even though you kind of know what's going to happen. It is so worth it. Moving on here, I have more fiction. I have the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. <gasps> Love this stuff. So good. You have to read this if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, like, kind of dark, depressing literature. <laughs> Definitely read this. And his just the short tales are so good. First part of the Witcher series. Um, you know, the one with all the awesome games. Yeah, there's books of that. And I tried to read this. My dad really liked it, so he recommended it to me. But I can't get through it. I, just, I don't know. Just, yeah. I guess it's not really my thing, or I just haven't really gotten into it yet. Uh, may give that a go another time. It's in um, Czech, by the way. So then I have Van de Koele Meren des Doods. It is Dutch. Yeah, I have a lot of different languages up here, by the way. You will notice that probably. This is a Dutch book. Back in high school, we had to um, get through like a list of literature and there wasn't really a list. It was more like you have to read this many books in this and this year. So um, in the last two years, they gave us freedom of choice, <laughs> which book we wanted to read. And I started reading uh, literature from before the 20th century. So 19th century and earlier. And that's when I really started to enjoy Dutch literature because all the modern stuff just oh, wasn't my thing at all. We had to pick a theme and I went with... What was it? Psychiatry from before 1900. And so I ended up with a few books about women that get hysteria and then kill themselves. Amazing. <laughs> you guys are going to think I'm so weird after you see my bookshelf. Anyways, I read this. It's by Frederik van Ede. If you're Dutch, Read this. It is good. I, it's depressing, but I loved it so much. Next to that, I have some 17th century poetry, which um, I bought in a whim and never really read yet. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. All my other Austen books are at my parents currently, because I just don't have enough room over here. So this is the last one I read. Love Jane Austen books. Absolutely love them. Then I have The Complete Works of Lord Tennyson. Um, this is poetry. You guys may or may not remember I used to be in a band. We still exist, but we just need to graduate, you know, all of us need to graduate. And then we're gonna get back to the band. Anyways, we were writing a song about the Lady of Shallot, um, so I got this book to read the tale, and I love the rest of it as well, so. The worst of Lord Tennyson. So then next to that, I have another, um, you know, historical woman. <laughs> Book. This is by Lumi Cooperis. It is Eline Fere. Again, if you're Dutch, you will probably know this. It's a classic. Um, I loved this. It is huge, as you can see. Really thick book. But it just was her entire life um, described and then how it ends. And it is just amazing. I love this so much. And then next to that, I have a book in Czech, which, by the way, has a painting of um, Waterhouse, one of my favorite painters. This is about... <laughs> You can also clearly see which books I got before I started studying Celtic and which I got afterwards. This is clearly from before. Um, it is about famous mysteries in history. It's one of those books that now, when I look at it, I'm like, seriously? So the next shelf is obviously Tolkien. Um, oh, this thing just contains, I believe, fashion magazines? Yeah, some old fashion magazines. And then this, I have this beautiful copy of The Return of the King. Illustrated by Alan Lee, and he is one of my favorite illustrators. Love his work. 
and that combined with Lord of the Rings is just amazing. But then I have a copy of The Children of Hurin, the special extended DVD editions of The Lord of the Rings, and I don't actually have the book here. I used to have the book, or well, my parents used to have the book, and then it disappeared, and I'm pretty sure I made it disappear, and it should be somewhere in that house, but I <laughs> And the last thing here is just a uh, notebook, which is still empty as of now, because I'm just too afraid to do anything in it, because it is so beautiful. It's kind of um, Hobbit themed. So the next shelf um, starts with a kitchen witch's cookbook. Yeah, that is one of those books that should not be taken too seriously. It is contains recipes and then like their magical properties. The Dance Music of Ireland, O'Neill's 1001 Double Jigs, Single Jigs, Hop and Slip Jigs, Reels, Hornpipes, long dances, etc. etc. Eight sheet music um, with Irish tunes that I got um, partially for the band to have something to practice with, partially for myself to have something to practice with on the harp. So then I have a few books about phytotherapy. I have um, Phytotherapy, <laughs> the book about phytotherapy. Um, that's by the way, Healing with Herbs. Next to that is um, a book about teas that heal, so mixtures of herbs that can have a certain healing effect. So next is a, <laughs> a good serious book about mythology. It is the Ultimate Encyclopedia of Mythology and it has pretty much all the cultures um, and their mythologies. I love this book. If you're into that kind of stuff I definitely recommend this one. It is beautiful on the inside, lots of pictures, and the um, information is good as well. So next to that I have a book uh, that's called Cruelty. It is a psychology book and it kind of, yeah, I started reading it and I never finished it yet. Um, it's a book about the psychology of cruelty and how it is possible that people are able to perform cruel deeds. I think it's really interesting. So next to that I have a tiny little book with Irish fairy tales, really cute, cute and tiny. Next to that is uh, a book called The Secret of Celts. The book of English magic, the most disappointing book I have ever bought in my life. This was not what I was expecting. Um, let's see, I read the back. I somehow thought that it would be about something else than it turned out to be. Um, I hated this book. It's about how to find ley lines and stuff like that. That's just not, not my type of, not my cup of tea. So then next to that is a book about druids. Again, it is not with my study book. That indicates something. There are some Celtic horoscopes. Again, ooh, not to be taken too seriously. Then next to that is a book about um, the medieval view on dwarves and elves and stuff like that. I haven't read that yet. Um, next I have a book about incense, the Peter Potts maps, yeah, this is a um, hiking route from the very south to the very north of the Netherlands, and um, yeah, these are the directions, and Robert and I walked um, the lowest parts, uh, was it, yeah, not this summer, but the summer before, we have come to my actual study books, so my real Celtic books. <laughs> um, and here I have oh more magazines, but these are like uh, sewing magazines, crafting magazines, knitting, stuff like that. So starting with this, oh this is a survey of the old Irish grammar, and I believe this is also material on old Irish grammar that's upside down. Yeah, this is a companion to All Irish Grammar by my teacher, Frank Grafis. The Dictionary of Irish Language, the compact edition. Now, besides the fact that this weighs about two kilos, um, the, it is compact <laughs> because of this. This is so hard to read. And when you're in a test and you're pressed for time, not a fun thing to use. So called Brudne da Dirka, which is... Um, probably my favorite story in Old Irish. It's the destruction of Dadergas Hostel. Um, if you feel like looking it up, just look up the destruction of Dadergas Hostel, you get a translation. The Laverna Widra, which is a, a manuscript, and this is a 
diplomatic edition of it. So we use this to translate from the grammar of all Irish, that's pretty self-explanatory. I have a book about medieval Ireland for uh, history. Then I have the Kreeth Gavlach, which is a um, law text. Then I have the Shkela Mukia Magdatho, which is the story of the pig of Magdatho, or Magdatho's pig. I have Old Irish Paradigms, um, some French book about Ireland. What's this? This is a vision of Merlin. Yeah, the stories from the time. Really cute. So over here is the Welsh side of my study books. Um, this is stuff I made at the prehistoric museum. I don't. I have a vlog of that. Um, so this is the Geriadur Maur, um, the dictionary. Welsh dictionary is has a normal size. These are all the tales of the Mabinoki. This is the Middle Welsh grammar. Um, we have Bright with Max and Ledig, Puich, Pendevik Duet, Welsh, and uh, Branwen Verg Hier. Um, and then these are books that I borrowed from friends and stuff that I yet have to read and return. <laughs> so here we have a little um, <laughs> intervention before we continue with more school books. Um, this is where I keep my art books. So, so first of all, I have this random. Japanese Lolita thing. Yeah. From way back. <laughs> I have a book about knitting. This is a book about fashion. It's upside down. A book with hairstyles that are unfortunately pretty much impossible to do on one's own hair without heat and everything. So yeah, I haven't been able to do much from that. Uh, this is a little tiny book with some natural uh, masks and hair masks. It is really cute. An anatomy book for drawing and painting. So kind of the basics of anatomy that you need to draw good figures. It is a book about Celtic calligraphy. Then what's this? Oh, this is a book about um, trompe-l'oeil, which is pretty much cheating the eye. Uh, and it's a book about, yeah, just look it up. <laughs> it's too complicated to explain in this video. A book about photography that I showed you in a recent haul. I have Drawing for Dummies. <laughs> it is actually a really good book for uh, beginners or even when you're not a beginner. This book about um, art and math. My mom gave this to me and Robert for Christmas because I like art and he likes math. <laughs> I have a tiny little book about um, watercolors and how to use them and then I have a book about acrylics and how to use them. Now we have arrived at the last um, shelf that has books in it and these are the rest of my study books. This is an introduction to manuscript studies. It is, um, yeah, it has pretty much everything you need to know about codexes and how they work, how they're composed a tiny, tiny little bit of paleography, art techniques. This was for one of my art history courses. Um, I loved this course so much and I love this book as well. Absolutely love it. I love the chapter on pigments. This is just incredibly interesting. The Historical Atlas of the Celtic World. This is my Old Norse, three Old Norse books. Um, there's yeah, it's an introduction to Old Norse 1, 2, and 3. And one of those is a glossary. One of those has tales and one is the grammar, I believe. So this is the introduction to Old English, which was one of my favorite subjects. I loved Old English. And this is an anthology of Old and Middle English and has a bunch of tales from that period. I'm pretty sure anyone that has studied something with art history has at least knows about this book. It is... Um, a kind of simple but really really good art history book. It covers pretty much all the uh, Western art from the prehistoric times uh, up until what was it? I believe the 50s or something. Um, yeah, really good. I really enjoyed reading this. Very well, well, very well written. And then the last thing is classical mythology. It has, um, yeah, Greek mythology. And 
I loved this subject, I loved reading this book and I am so sad that I forgot almost everything from it because it was only one course that was about Greek mythology um, so yeah, it just left my mind really quickly but I'm glad I have this book so that I can freshen up my knowledge on classic mythology and that's it guys, that's all that's on my bookshelf I really hope you enjoyed this video, maybe got a few ideas for books that you want to pick up yourself. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!